In the next video now, we're going to look at where G comes from. Uh, the dividend valuation model we just looked at requires an estimate of growth in dividends, and uh, technically the model requires an estimate of the sustainable rate of growth, uh, SRG, we'll abbreviate that for. Now the question is, what is that, and where does it come from? Well, the SRG is the rate at which a company's earnings and dividends can grow from within, that is by reinvestment of earnings. You know, you and I have probably all known or know of some people who live a very, uh, let's say, extravagant life, or they seem to be very wealthy, and yet we know or we find out that they've really, uh, they're living on a lot of borrowed time or literally borrowed money. Um, it's a very different prospect uh, living a high life or living well and uh, off of borrowed funds or funds from outside somebody else's money versus uh, living a lifestyle that's based on your own earnings. It's the same way with companies. Uh, in order to, to grow from within, uh, or let's say to have sustainable growth, that growth has to be from, from within. And uh, SRG in this, uh, as we'll see, is dependent on the firm's profitability and its retention of earnings. It doesn't matter, matter how profitable a company is if it basically distributes every dime that it makes as dividends, for instance, then uh, it can't grow from within. The higher the profit, the better the firm's profitability, and the more of those profits it retains, the greater the SRG, the sustainable rate of growth it can enjoy. Now, we'll talk a little bit about where growth comes from here. High growth businesses generally retain and reinvest most of their earnings. Low growth firms tend to distribute large cash dividends. Dividend policy, therefore, tends to reflect the position of the firm in its life cycle. I'll bet if you've had marketing class, then you understand or remember something about the notion of a product life cycle, that most products go through stages of introduction, and then growth, then maturity, and then decline. Well, you might imagine that a company can be understood as really just a composite of the various products and product lines uh, that it has. And so if you've got a company whose product lines are mostly in the growth stages, that's, that's a growth company. And if most of their products and product lines are in mature stages, well, that's what makes for a company in maturity or in mature stages. Um, the Boston Consulting Group, a very well-known and uh, well-respected consulting group, some years ago developed a, a matrix. Uh, it's not exclusive to them, but I think they articulated it in some uh, some unique ways that uh, sort of helped make a name for them. And what they did was to basically identify four quadrants. And they helped companies to identify where in those quadrant, in those, uh, in that matrix more or less, the, uh, their products and product lines fell so that they could then help to, uh, help the company to determine how to best handle, to best uh, grow those. Uh, those various products and product lines and therefore help the company overall to be more successful. Well, just as I mentioned, if you remember the product life cycle for marketing, then you'll uh, remember these uh, four stages, introduction, growth, maturity, and decline. And uh, so we look at those here. The first stage of introduction uh, is a stage where there's a uh, high growth of the of revenues, for instance, uh, 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 not necessarily a profit yet, and certainly not necessarily cash flows. For the most part, uh, you know, think about the state of an infant. Infant, a lot of potential, but not much to uh, basically a cash user. A uh, lot of growth potential, but uh, it's low market share, uh, uh, and so that's off, very often identified as a question mark: Will it survive or will it not? Uh, there's very very high mortality rate in uh, these kind of this in products and product lines and companies in this stage here. But if they're successful and they grow, uh, then they move into the growth stages where there's high growth. That is, you have uh, uh, revenues growing year after year, profits hopefully growing year after year, cash is being produced at that point, but it uh, has to be used to buy more inventory, to buy, you know, to grow the company really, to be able to realize uh, the growth potential the company has. High growth, high market share, and uh, during the growth stages, 
Uh, these are, well, companies in the growth stages or products in growth stages are identified as stars. Think about the rising stars. But if they continue to grow and are successful, eventually all, you know, these markets will mature and uh, they develop into uh, what are called, characterized as cash cows. A cash cow or a, a product, a product line, a company in its, uh, uh, in mature stages, it's not growing like it was. Uh, year over year in revenues, profits, cash flow, um, high market share, um, and so it's a net cash generator. Uh, you don't need to continually reinvest as much as you did before, and this is where companies will tend to pay out a higher percentage of earnings as dividends, and they may also choose uh, to use some of those uh, the excess cash that they produce to buy companies and products and product lines down in the introductory, and maybe even the growth stages. Uh, there are products, of course, that maturity stage can go on for a long period of time, but let's imagine that there's a, a stage here where you have a, uh, let's say, low growth company, uh, low market share. Um, those are characterized as dogs. These are generally products and product lines that have kind of run their course, and uh, like the buggy whip industry, they're uh, they were they had their day, but uh, railroads would be another example that uh, you know there was a time when they were growth companies, but not any longer, and so their prospects for growth are are fairly weak. Well, if we think about dividend policy, then once again we can go back and see that during those introductory stages, those those uh, companies are not even profitable, and every dime that they make, such as they you know, whatever it is if any, are being churned right back into it. But for the most part, the company, um, those products and product lines have to be fed and cared for. They're not producing net cash flow. Um, under the, uh, in the growth stages, those companies are producing cash flow, but they're also, <coughs> excuse me, also consuming it in order to realize their potential. And so typically companies are not going to pay any dividends during that period of time. They may start to initiate cash split, uh, excuse me, stock splits and stock dividends uh, during this period of time. But uh, they generally don't pay any cash dividends except perhaps toward the end of the growth stages. During the mature stages, that's when, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> I've been talking a lot today. During the growth stages, <coughs> excuse me, the maturity stages, that's when companies will uh, initiate uh, cash dividend policies and toward, you know, as they mature, uh, maybe pay out even higher percentages of their earnings as dividends. And during the dog stages, that's when you hopefully get out of those pretty early because they're going to be a drain on the, uh, on the company. They don't produce much cash, as any, if any. Uh, they're on the way out, and that's where you might pay even liquidating, liquidating dividend if you, as you get out of that, uh, that particular uh, market. Well, in equation form, here's the, uh, the SRG returning back uh, from kind of the theory or the overall uh, perspective to what's happening here. Growth is a function of profitability and retain, retention of those profits. Um, and so you see the formula here. G is, can be estimated as ROE times the retention ratio. Now, ROE hopefully is a formula that you remember from uh, some time back in our ratio analysis section. It's, it's a primary measure of shareholder return, net income divided by shareholder's equity. The retention ratio is actually the flip side of the uh, payout ratio. The dividend payout ratio is the percentage of earnings that are paid out in the form of dividends in a given year. And so if a company is, for each dollar of earnings, let's say it's paying out 20 cents to its shareholders, then its payout ratio is 20 percent and its retention ratio is 80 percent. If a firm's ROE is 8 percent, its retention ratio is 60 percent, its growth rate G would be 8% times 60% or 4.8%. So it's a fairly simple calculation. Now, what would the growth rate be if the dividend payout ratio is 45% and ROE is 15%? Well, again, the formula calls for ROE, 15%, times the retention ratio. 
If you're given the dividend payout ratio of 45%, then of course you would need to remember that the flip side of that is the 55% that's not paid out. And that's the retention ratio. So 15% times the 55% is 8.25%. So that's your G, your sustainable rate of growth. Stocks are a lot tougher to value than bonds because investors have no promises of what they're going to get. And also because returns come in two forms, dividends and price appreciation. You know, there are lots of approaches to valuing and evaluating common stocks, but the dividend growth model is a, is a standard beginning point. Uh, there are a number of other approaches that look at cash flow per share, that seek to look at, say, price earnings ratio, and if the company's had a a particular price earnings ratio that's prevailed over a long period of time, then you can use that to, in current year earnings to estimate what the current price will be. But you know, one of the important things to realize, again, is that stock is a lot tougher to value than bonds because you don't have those promises of what you're going to get. Um, and so anyway, hopefully this is at least an introduction to that and we'll do some more problems uh, in class.